Hello, I'm Dave Baring, Technical Director here at TriStar, and welcome to another Tech Talk. You know, as we've talked about the Rulon materials and some of the differences in how it's manufactured compared to, uh, you know, the uh, boys down the street or down there in Texas. Um, and there's some key things that we uh, also need to consider uh, before we even get started making the material. And that's a process called polymer characterization. And in order for you to uh, really produce a quality product, you need to understand some of the little subtle nuances of the material. Um, and one of the things that St. Cobain takes great pride in is the ability to test all the materials, whether it be the resin, the fillers, the pigments, whatever the case may be, they have the equipment in a very, very state-of-the-art laboratory in Massachusetts that allows them to qualify and characterize the different materials uh, that they're using to make the Rulon products. So we thought it would be good for us to take a, a quick look at these seven uh, different steps that are taken to really predetermine what the nature of the material is before it's even blended pressed and centered. So let's talk about what those are. Number one is uh, dynamic mechanical analysis, which is also known as DMA. Now DMA is a way uh, of identifying the regions within a polymer where it's transitioning, like its glass transition point. Um, this is used to also um, determine the quality of the material uh, prior to blending uh, it identifies any small regions that uh, uh, cannot be found using uh, DSC testing, which is a different type of testing. Um, but it's just one, one method of understanding exactly what the nature of the raw material is. Uh, the second one is uh, thermomechanical analysis, or TMA. Um, in this case, we're taking a heat and we're checking dimensional change in the materials uh, when it's subjected to certain loads and uh, this can be applied to all polymers and basically what TMA is doing is uh, measuring its softening point, uh, its expansion properties, um, melt behaviors, creep behaviors and things like this which again are very important when it comes down to uh, designing materials or categorizing materials for bearing applications. Applications. Next is thermogrammetric analysis or TGA. Uh, this is a method that's used to determine the physical and chemical properties of a material as they are reacted with uh, increasing heat and this is usually done at a very uniform rate. Uh, TGA indicates the material's composition including volatiles and fillers, inert fillers, and it also helps us determine the thermal stability of the material. Uh, the fourth test is uh, differential scanning calorimetry. Um, this is a test that when combined with an FTAR analysis, uh, it, it further classifies the materials by melt points. Um, this allows us to check the parts and the resins for contaminations that may not be picked up in the FTIR. Uh, it also is used to characterize materials and understand what their thermal performance might be. Next is the uh, FTIR, which is uh, Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy. Uh, we have an FTIR, uh, FTIR here at TriStar. Uh, we're very proud to have this device here. It allows us to do some things that uh, a lot of our competition obviously cannot, but it was an investment we made that uh, just kind of sets us apart from uh, many other companies. What this test does for us is it gives us a first look of a polymer. And uh, for us at TriStar, it does a couple of things. First, it allows us to take a piece of material that's sent to us by a customer and we're able to do a first quick scan uh, looking at the chemical footprint of the polymer and that helps us determine you know what the base resin is 
and perhaps uh, if there's anything going on in terms of uh, uh, changes in the material or something that is not supposed to be there. Um, it also helps us identify counterfeit materials. Um, each material has its own chemical footprint and sometimes even with counterfeit rulons, which we run into a lot, um, we can see minor variations in the material that would tell us if there's deviations in uh, percentages of fills um, or if there's something else going on in the resin that uh, would uh, show us for sure that it's not an, uh, an actual rule-on material. So FTR is a very important part of what we do. It's, a, it's the logical first step in identifying materials and uh, it also helps us identify if there's any contamination uh, in the product. Uh, the sixth item is uh, scanning electron microscopy. Now this is something that's very unique to Sanka Bay because uh, we're the only ones that would actually take the resin as it comes in from the vendors, whether it's DuPont or Asahi or Dineon, whoever. Um, and, and we do this extra step uh, to really further qualify the materials to be sure that the resins we're getting are in fact a spec. Um, and this, uh, this uh, SEM allows us to do that by um, looking very closely at the, uh, the surface topography of the material. And that's, that's important only from the standpoint of being able to be sure that the material is, uh, is blendable, is compoundable, uh, and it's going to do the same thing that we need it to do on a consistent batch-to-batch -batch basis. And the last uh, test is uh, particle analysis. Um, this is another key point uh, to determining whether or not the materials are uh, proper, if they're to standards that have been set by St. Cobain. It also is uh, critical in determining uh, the uh, blending materials, the additives. Uh, be sure that those particle sizes are compatible with the PTFV particle sizes. And so um, uh, to be sure that those get properly blended. Um, so all of these tests um, are relative. They're all part of the, the ongoing processes at uh, St. Cobain to be sure that the product is consistent from lot to lot. Uh, that's not to say that things don't slip by. There are, there are things that can happen downstream in the processing itself. Uh, that uh, can be a simple little anomaly in the process. Um, so, um, you know, these are, these are first step items that are, are taken care of and uh, again, put St. Cobain and the Rulon products uh, at a higher level than any other material out there. Um, we think that for those of you that have used the Rulon or for those of you that are considering the Rulon, these are important points to understand and uh, we hope that you'll review our white paper and uh, get a little bit better idea of why it's important to the rule on product line and why it's important to the ultimate performance of your parts. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you again on another Tech Talk.